Do you know? You use nearly 100 liters of water every morning. Do you know? The kilo of rice that you eat requires nearly 10,000 liters of water to grow, and the rice you eat every year needs up to half an acre of land to grow. Do you know? You use up to a ton of steel to build the car you drive, and 300,000 liters of water to manufacture that ton of steel, plus thousands of tons of coal or equivalent energy. Do you know? You use tons of wood to manufacture the papers at your desk, and over 300 liters of water for just one kilo of paper that you use. In fact, every day, each of us carries a huge backpack of resources that weighs the system down. With prosperity, the use of resources by every individual increases, and with it, the size of the backpack. As the population increases, the weight of each additional backpack is a huge strain on the system. This load of resources must be included in all planning processes. Only this will ensure that the needs of a growing population will be met. Industrial ecology is a new planning platform that is based on the flows of resources. It is the study of flows of material and energy through socio-economic systems with a view to optimizing their use. This is in sharp contrast to conventional monetary economics, which involves the study of the flow of money through socio-economic systems. This approach is built on the idea that industrial activities should not be considered in isolation from the wider world, but should be viewed as industrial ecosystems functioning within the natural ecological system or the biosphere. In other words, industrial ecology is the study of flows of material and energy in industrial and consumer activities. The study of the effects of these flows on the environment. The study of the influences of economic, political, regulatory and social factors on the flow use and transformation of resources. What lies before us therefore is a new, exciting and sustainable planning platform for regional planners and companies that will provide tangible and comprehensive results. Significantly, industrial ecology operates in conjunction with other traditional strategies such as pollution control, waste minimization and cleaner production. This planning process lays stress on a systemic approach. This route does not consider individual elements of a system in isolation, but views the entire system of human activities as a whole. For instance, while considering the environmental impact of the automobile, the entire automobile system involving the production of the automobile, the kind of fuel the automobile uses, emissions from them, the impact of the road system, such as construction or maintenance, the recycling of components and their ultimate disposal are studied holistically. To tackle a common problem like vehicular pollution, the systemic view would attempt to understand why people travel and consider solutions to minimize this need by developing strategies such as better town planning or bringing services closer to people. However, any such systemic solutions cannot be an immediate or short-term strategy. Hence, conventional solutions are still needed. What is significant is that the systemic solution is more lasting and creates a clear roadmap for the future. Industrial ecology has evolved over the last two decades and is now a rapidly developing field of study all over the world. It could be said that the beginnings of industrial ecology were in Kullenburg, a small town in Denmark. The process of industrial symbiosis here can be seen as a successful example of an industrial complex minimizing pollution and optimizing the use of various resources over the last three decades. The power plant, the plasterboard plant, the biotech unit, the fishing industry and the town municipality developed a method of sharing each other's waste to mutual advantage. This process of symbiosis gave rise to the thought 
that the industrial system could emulate the natural ecosystem where the waste of one activity often becomes the feed for another. The aim of the industrial system should be to grow with less use of resources. The strategy for implementing the concepts of industrial ecology is often referred to as eco-restructuring and includes four main elements. Optimizing the use of resources. Closing material loops and minimizing emissions. Dematerializing activities. Reducing and eliminating the dependence on non-renewable sources of energy. Many tools have been developed in industrial ecology to help implement the concepts. The first priority is to understand the industrial metabolism of the system and the flow of materials and energy through it. Material flow analysis or resource flow analysis enables the planner to study the consumption and waste patterns of the system and take action accordingly. In Tirupur, in the south of India, the collective consumption of water and the huge price paid for it by the 4,000 small textile units was far from obvious. A resource flow analysis for the town showed that water could be economically recycled. It was also found that since the calorific value of the solid waste was high, usage of firewood could be reduced. Once a specific resource has been identified as critical, a resource utilization map is prepared to provide information about its usage. For example, a water resource utilization map is being prepared in the Indian city of Bangalore by the Resource Optimization Initiative, or the ROI. The map will show who uses water and how much. Substance flow analysis is yet another tool that tracks the flow of specific substances through the socio-economic system and attempts to quantify them. This analysis was implemented in South Africa with very practical results. The study revealed that policies aimed at reusing copper in Cape Town should target poorer residential and industrial areas rather than wealthy areas. Much of the copper stock was in poor households that use copper pots and pans. A life cycle assessment, or LCA, studies the impact of a particular product or activity over its entire life cycle. This is now commonly carried out in many parts of the world for a range of products and services. After such analysis and assessments are made, the following strategy options would be required to put industrial ecology into practice. Augmenting the availability of the resource if possible. For example, water harvesting. Eliminating the use of critical resources by changing technology or possibly by relocating activities using them. Reducing the use of such resources by using lighter materials recycling the wastes so that the same quantities of resources are made to perform their functions many times before being discarded into the environment. Substituting with a resource whose efficiency is better. Hence, the consequent flow of waste to the environment is minimal. Replacing a resource with one which is interminable, such as solar or wind energy. Although there are a multitude of strategy options, industrial symbiosis is one of the special strategies in this field. The concept of industrial symbiosis emerges from the biological symbiotic process, where the waste of one activity feeds as a resource into another activity. This can be used in the development of eco-industrial parks. Utility sharing could also be considered by industries in an eco-industrial park. These industries or other activities could pool the resources that might otherwise have been generated or supplied individually. For example, if there are many units in an industrial estate that require steam, 
Only one steam generator is established that feeds all the units, assuming that there are economies of scale. These concepts are not restricted to industrial estates, but can be applied to other spheres of activity as well.